I'm Dave Rage, the average hacker, and welcome to IDOR, Insecure Direct Object Reference. We're gonna be going over uh, one of the burp labs today, uh, so let's just dive right in. So if you don't know what IDOR is, uh, here we have uh, the Port Swigger website, we have the Insecure Direct Object Reference right here, uh, and they basically just do a really great job uh, explaining everything that is IDOR among all the other, you know, stuff that they have in their academy as well. Uh, so what are Insecure Direct Object References or IDOR? What they are is they're a type of access control vulnerability that comes up when an application uses user supplied inputs uh, to access objects directly. If you don't get it, uh, we have some examples down here. So basically one of these URLs should look pretty familiar to you if use the internet, do a lot of online shopping, uh, pay car insurance, whatever it is you do on the internet, um, you should come across uh, some of this stuff, right? So here uh, we have the uh, customer number 132355. That's a, a pretty common thing. They'll give you like a customer ID number. Uh, they'll give you some sort of number that's associated with you and your account. Uh, after you like authenticate or after you log in, make a purchase, whatever the case may be. So they give you this number that is kind of like auto-populated, but then they don't really expect you to edit that number. So if you change this, um, the last three, instead of 355 to 356, let's just say, you might be able to find another user account's information and there's nothing on the back end on the server side that's stopping you from seeing that. So there's no validation going on. They just give you open permissions to do whatever it is you want to do. Obviously that's bad. <laughs> um, and then, you know, in this case, if, they, if they're saving like a text file, like a receipt or something like that, they might save it uh, in, a, in a static file in which you could try to enumerate this. So instead of one, two, one, four, four, do, you know, four, five as the last digit and see if you get uh, someone else's receipt, someone else's static text file. So you can gather some information, some on other customers or, or you know, whatever it is people do with that information. So right now we're going to go over the IDOR lab um, from Burp Suite. It's on the Port Swigger Academy. Uh, and all these labs are really awesome. You'll see that they're really great and they're really informative and they give you a really good hands-on exercise that you can practice over and over and over and over again. And you can try to find different ways to do things even outside of, you know, um, the Burp Suite uh, software. As we see on the left-hand side, uh, we have the Burp Suite Community Edition all fired up and ready to go. So we're not even gonna look at the explanation for this lab. We're just going in blind. And yes, I have, spoiler alert, I have done this lab uh, a few times. Uh, so I do know where everything is, but we're just gonna go and, and talk about some of the methodologies, the way of thinking um, that a pen tester or an attacker might have. So on this tab, I already have the lab all fired up, rearing to go. And as you see here, uh, we have a shop. So there's a little shop. We got some fur babies, giant enter key. We, we have some products here. It just looks like a normal e-commerce type of thing. Uh, and then in Burp Suite, we have the target, we have the site map. So this will populate whenever you go to a website and we can just open it up. We have a nice tree here of, of various things that the web app is doing, all the stuff that's that exists there. Uh, then if we go to the HTTP history, we can see each and every single thing that has populated uh, so far. I don't really like to use intercept too much. Sometimes uh, when you make a request from a web app, it'll have maybe four or five, or I've seen even like 20 <laughs> different requests that are made, requests and responses that just kind of fire it off. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to go through the intercept because you have to go one by one by one. And sometimes it's a little bit confusing and you can get kind of lost. So I just look at the HTTP history right here, uh, and then we can go ahead and send them to repeater or intruder. All right, sorry about that. So I had to reload the lab here. Let's look into some of these, uh, some of these images, some of these e-commerce e items. So if we go to view details of some of them, you know, we see uh, we see like a picture here. We see uh, a description of things. We don't really see a whole lot. Uh, and then here we see the product ID. Um, doesn't really seem to be anything here uh, that we can try to destroy or try to hack into or really do anything with. I mean, 
you could try to do like a, a SQL injection maybe on this product ID or you know cross state scripting or, or something like that, but we're not really here for that. So it's perfectly fine, right? So we go over here and we see product ID two. All right, so this is going up by one each and every single time, four. So we see we see a few of these, but for IDOR, we really want something that's meaningful here. We want to see something uh, you know, that we can get that we're not supposed to get. So if we go all the way down, view details over here. So we have product ID 20. Well, you know, let's go ahead and see if there's a product ID, you know, 21 that exists. Not found. Okay. So that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, no big deal. There's a my account. Uh, I don't think they gave us credentials for this lab. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, well, maybe uh, some of the default stuff that they give you in the other labs might work here. But regardless, right, this is not why we are here. We are here for the live chat, okay? Live chat's pretty cool. We can go in and do some stuff and we can say hello to the live chat. We can see, uh, you know, typing, returning. So we can try to do a few different vulnerabilities here. Um, so when it comes to a message, obviously the messages that we send in here, they're, they're displaying, they're persistent. We try to refresh the page. We still get hello. We still get um, our chat history. So this would be a fantastic place to do something like a cross-site scripting, a, a stored cross-site scripting, right? So if we just try, I know that's not, <laughs> that's not why we're here, um, but we can try it. So we just do a simple alert one, a script and we can send it. Um, so what we see here is that they, <laughs> so they're not actually posting what we said, right? So normally what would happen uh, in a situation like this, depending on how the web app behaves, um, you know, it, it might not filter it out and then it would be here and then it'd be persistently here. Then you get that alert pop up every single time. Um, but we're here for IDOR, okay? So we look at the URL, nothing too crazy here, just normal chat, but we have this view transcript button. So let's go click it and see what happens. So we have text. So we have our, our static file here of our message with the chat bot, which is, which is interesting, right? But it's also very interesting to see that we get, I mean, I've, I've done, I downloaded this before. Um, we get, it starts off at two. Um, so two dot text, right? So if we go again, three, go again, four, go again, five. So it's sequential, right? So it's adding plus one every single time. But the interesting thing here is that it started at two. So the big question is going to be, well, what happens if we started it at one or, or a, a different number, right? So in this case, it's gonna be one because we start off at two and it's adding one to every time. So if we tried to look up uh, text uh, named like 11, that's not gonna exist yet in, in this specific scenario. So we can go ahead uh, and unfortunately we, <laughs> we can use intercept. Um, so we'll put the intercept on, uh, click view transcript. And we'll forward that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Forward, forward. Okay, and now here we see this. This is very interesting. So we're trying to download the transcript of six dot text. So here we want to edit it and put one. And we'll see if we can actually download that file. So we're going to forward it and we're just going to keep on forwarding it, right? Uh, we could turn, you know, we can try to, you know, add one to get every, oh, and we got it here, great. So we're gonna open it up and we get this nice little message. Uh, oh, uh, about people thinking about, uh, you know, their passwords. So, okay, my password is this, okay. We have the password now and we need to obviously do something with it. So we'll have uh, like a login so we can copy this in the lab and we can go to my account. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same account every time, oh, intercepts on. Uh, so we're gonna go to my account. I think it's what, like Carlos uh, password. We can just paste that in there. Hey, we got it. Uh, so yeah, that's just the lab. Uh, that's just a, a quick and easy way 
uh, to show uh, IDOR vulnerabilities. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, feel free to post something down in the comments of any additional content you'd like to see on the channel. All right, take care.